folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. It's food plot time, middle of summer. Seems kind of strange, but we are getting ready to plant for our fall food plots. And we're gonna be working up kind of this hidden area. I think this is gonna be a real gem of a spot on our property. First year out here, haven't hunted it before, don't know anything about it really, but we're gonna give it a go. Now you can see the strip that's around the edge here. We've already planted our screening product there. And in fact, I'll have Chris show you some close-ups too, but it's already starting to sprout. We worked this up a while back and got it all planted. So this stuff's gonna grow way taller than I am. I can't wait to see it. Really gonna give a lot of seclusion and cover to this area here. So this is, is a heavy concentration of that screening seed. And this is where I started out uh, with my spreader. I did a broadcast spreader and, and I totally forgot to adjust the settings on there. And, and some of it's actually the seed still sitting on the surface, which is kind of funny. And, and that was on Friday. Today is Wednesday. That, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's five days, but this stuff was already sprouted up two days ago. It germinated that quickly. And again, this stuff gets sky high. I don't know if it's gonna get 12 foot high by the time we planted it, but um, we're probably gonna get at least eight, nine, 10 feet out of it uh, in a early-ish July planting. And so yesterday and today we had to disc this up. And so previously we mowed this down with a brush hog. And if time allowed, which I'm always short on time, I would have sprayed before brush hogging, let that die off and mowed it off. But we didn't have that kind of time. So we got it mowed down. We got this all dissed up. So the first thing we did is, is this section over here, kind of inside where the screening area is at and hooked up an all purpose plow. And, and so I wanted to do something a bit different, all right? And we had used a three shank plow previously on the 1025R out at our other property to work up the ground. And that worked really well, as long as I had it in four wheel drive, which I, I didn't for a little, a little while, but it worked well. So I wanted to see if the 1025 had enough gumption to handle the five shank plow on this field here, all right? And so we hooked it up, put it to work, dropped it all the way down and scooted it along. And it was straining the engine, all right? It was straining it, but it never dropped down below well, maybe just a hair below 3000 RPMs. I had it in low four wheel drive and it cruised along. I was, I had the pedal down the whole time in, in low range. So I wasn't, I wasn't flying by any means, but I was, I was going along and I did it down and back a strip. And this is unworked ground. This is virgin ground. So with sod in it and everything else, it's, it's a tough application for a small tractor like that. And so then I thought, hey, let's put it on the 3025E and we'll do a strip right next to that and see what happens with it. And lo and behold, it stalled out on me. And so with some care, some, some tender love and care and, and making sure I didn't go too fast and low range with the 3025E, which is supposed to be, well, it's, it's, a, it's the same nominal 25 horsepower engine, but displacement's different, torque's different. It should have handled it a heck of a lot easier. It's a heavier tractor too. It should have more power to the ground, but that thing, it stalled out again on me. And I was able to get it back and through the job, but I had to kind of watch my speed. It was a, a constant change on the, the hydro pedals on how hard I was pressing it. It was not just holding it down like I was with the 1025R. And so lo and behold, surprising results. I did not expect the 1025R to outwork the 3025E, but that's exactly what happened. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a ballast weight solution for your tractor. You know I'm all about safety and this is just a perfect match. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost effective solutions. In fact, there's liquid ballast on this tractor right now, right inside these rear tires. So it's hidden, it's out of the way. It gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader. It gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is gonna be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also gonna be 
safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to rimguardsolutions.com to find a dealer near you. Now my experience with a disc is varying compared to a lot of the viewers and the comments that are out there, and that's okay, that's just fine. For me, when I'm working up a new piece of ground, this isn't the ideal tool. In fact, a plow of some kind I would think would be a better tool for that. But as the experience shows, it was taking a lot longer to do and a lot slower and not great results. And so what I have found works really well, and, and this really couldn't be done, I don't think, without the use of a hydraulic top link because you are using that a lot, but you're pitching this, this disc so that all that weight is on one of the gangs, not on both of them because it's, it's just too light for uh, a, a tractor this size and, and the disc this size doesn't have enough weight and, and maybe I will fabricate something and drop a, a bunch of weight on here at some point but for the time being this is what we're working with and the proof is in the pudding because that first pass with all that weight on one of them at the most aggressive angle it is really really ripping up that soil very well through the sod busting it all up chopping it into I mean it, it, it was slicing through it like butter it was really incredible there were a few times where it clogged up, it jammed up, and kind of wanted to drag a, a big pile of dirt inside along with it, but that was few and far between, and you can fix that really quickly, again, with this hydraulic top link. So previously showing you this disc in action has not been in a, in a big square field like this, all right? It's been in, in thin strips, long strips, where you can't really crosshatch it all, and it makes it really challenging to chop up the side when you can only go one direction. You can go back and forth, but you can't crisscross it and really kind of take it on from a different angle. And so that's what I wanted to show you in today's video is how you can tackle that. And I did a little bit of experimenting myself trying to trying to show because, well, you know, I'm not a farmer by trade, right? And so I don't know the most efficient way necessarily to, to work up a field. And I gave it a go on what I thought might be efficient, but you still find yourself having to kind of three point turn around and get back and forth. And it seems like wasted time, but you don't want to do a lot of turning with a disc in the ground. It can really wear out these bearings pretty quickly. And so by the time we got done with the first pass, I was running out of fuel. That's like the story of my life these days, either, either equipment leaking or breaking down or running out of fuel. So we run out of fuel, we run out of battery to video this, and we run out of time. So we called it a day yesterday afternoon, then we came back out this morning to finish up on our second pass. And now the second pass, it's, it's hard to tell if it's working well or not, because I, I tended to uh, to run it fairly level for the most part, but you can on the fly, again with this hydraulic top link, adjust that. And so there'd be certain areas where I felt like, oh, the sod needed to be really cut up, like maybe it just didn't work all that well in the first pass. And so I would, on the fly as I'm going along, just really angle that and just get more aggressive all that weight on one gang again and rip through those areas and then kind of level it back down and, and get to that uh, that even level there too. And so overall, you guys tell me what you think, but this is basically two or, or two and a half passes, I guess. There's certain areas I did a little bit more on, but it looks pretty darn good. I mean, I'm going to spray it. We're going to be leaving on vacation. I'm going to let it sit. We're going to come back and I'm going to till it up and I think it's going to be ready to plant. And I'm probably going to have to till a couple of passes, I would imagine. But after I spray it and let it sit, kill it off, give it some time to settle down and a couple of passes tilling, I think we're going to be golden for our late July, early August planting. And so we're going to be kind of chunking this plot up, showing you some different things out there. And so the, the planting times will vary a little bit, but our, our clovers and, and chicory and, and brassicas and legumes, oh gosh, yeah, oats, rice, you know, all that kind of stuff are going to be spreading out throughout here in different chunks and taking a look at how they perform this fall.
folks, that's going to wrap it up for us today. I am excited to get this seed in the ground sometime soon, but I, I don't want fall to come too quickly. I am really enjoying summertime right now, but I can't wait to see how this turns out. And so on that note, if you want to check it out yourself, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below completely free. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, if you need a disc or a tiller or a new bucket or a set of forks or a grapple or a snow pusher or a snow blower, we can help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.